Saints, I want to emphasize to you that when God created the hell dimension, this world below, God created hell out of the thoughts of anger and wrath that the privilege that he had gave to the angels was taken lightly by them for evil. That they took his love and they stepped on it. They took his gifts and they used it as a means of I'll override your authority. I'll override your superiority. They pit faith in themselves because they had abilities. Every angel that turned against God had abilities within themselves. Some had prosperity abilities. Some had miracle abilities. Some had prophecy abilities. Some had um, organization, order, peace, wisdom, graces. They all had abilities within them that they pit their confidence in those abilities that they could override God. And he made hell out of his steaming anger. It's like a garbage disposal. And he made it for them. The problem is that when Adam sinned, Adam listened to them to sin. When Adam sinned, it was him choosing the elements of their soul as his own soul. So how the Bible said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. Adam let the mind that was in them be in him also. That's why God was saying, don't eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil because that tree is carrying the brain cells of demons. It's the same pattern of mental traveling that they did when they fell. And God said, don't touch this. Now, why would God put it in the garden if he didn't want them to use it? The same way there's many things on earth right now that God don't want you to use. Why does God let things be accessible to you that he says don't touch? Because this is the only way that purging happens in someone's heart. This is the only way that consistency and loyalty could even be a notion and a measurement of somebody's summary of their life, the summary of their decisions. The only way that you could see who you love is if you have options. Saints, loyalty will not exist without options. Faithfulness would not exist. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. The word faithfulness could not exist if there wasn't options. Discernment wouldn't even exist if there was an option. Prayer would not be needed if there was an option. Options, the blessing of it, is that you can see where your heart stands, who your heart is with. Remember when Elisha had Gehazi? Gehazi went, lied on Elisha, took the garments from Naaman and lied, just lied, just told lies. You know, these garments is for the prophets, just lying. When he comes back, he hides the garments and acts like nothing happened. Wiped his mouth off. 
And Elisha said, did not my heart go with you? My heart went with you. Elisha is saying, I went with you. My heart is with you. So even when you go to sin, I'm sinning with you. And I'm grieved by sin because I'm with you. And wherever you go, that's where I go. You say, well, prophet, could you explain that? Remember, David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're with me. David wasn't saying that for everybody. Because there's some people, if they make their bed in hell, the Lord not with them. But David's saying, because you come into a covenant to be with me. Me and you are in an eternal covenant and contract with each other. If I made my bed in hell, you'll be right there with me. It's a deep phrase of poetry. That even David knew. That now me and God's heart is knit together. Saints, when God made hell, it was a garbage disposal. It was where he dumps trash. It was where he dumps corpse, people that are dead. The Bible says in Psalms that the dead do not praise God. The word praise means to celebrate, acknowledge, to esteem one's greatness and to speak and express words of acknowledgement of their greatness and their might and their accomplishments. It says the dead do not, they do not recognize the Lord. They do not celebrate his accomplishments. They do not see him as great. So when God made Adam a living soul, he gave Adam the ability to see his greatness. When Adam sinned, he saw the greatness of sin. So now sin became what he praised. Why do you think when people come into the earth, all they do is praise sin? Because that's what that tree opened up his eyes to praise and celebrate the greatness of flaws, the greatness of weakness. That's why you meet people all the time talking about, we all going to sin, we all going to make mistakes. That's what they see. That's all they could see. All they could see is the greatness of sin. So when you talk about the greatness of God, they're saying, yeah, yeah, but we still not always going to do things right. How? So if God is greater than not doing things right, then why will we be subject to always do things wrong? If God is greater and God is inside of you, Christ in you the hope of glory. If Christ is greater than corruption, why would you say that corruption always going to happen eventually? The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verse 14, to make no provision for the flesh. To make no provision for the flesh. That means don't provide. Don't provide for the lie that you're going to make mistakes. Don't provide. Stop making provision. Stop making an exchange that I'm always going to do something wrong. I'm always going to say something wrong. Saints, what I noticed, though, my personal observation, people are not in the spirit all the time. People are not in the spirit all the time. And something that I notice is this. What I've been doing for a decade, over a decade now, is I've been attempting to train people to stay in the spirit. But people are not always in the spirit. And so people tend to say something stupid or do something stupid, even though you train them how to be spirit. You'll see, you'll see you're like, why would you say that? Why would you do that? Why would you? Because people are not in the spirit all the time. 
Did you know that to be in the spirit is not that you leave your soul and you enter your spirit? That's not what being in the spirit is. Being in the spirit is you taking the spirit of your soul and letting your spirit of your spirit overtake the spirit of your soul. Remember, the Bible talks about being renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind is the spirit of your soul. So the spirit of your soul has to be brought by your thought process. You are the one thinking, not God. You are the one that have thoughts within your brain. You have to intentionally take the, 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 um, since one time I was walking through Walmart, uh, one time, this was some time ago. You know, Walmart changed. Back in the day, it was cool. And while I was there, there was a... There was a Hindu-looking Ninja Turtle. Yeah, he had looked like a Hindu. And he had some bifocals on. It looks... You know, when you look at him in the eye, you ain't looking in the eye. It looked like two golf balls inside. it, like somebody about to play pool with it. It's like, it's like you're hole in one. It, it's like golf. It's like all type of stuff. Golf balls, pool balls, purple balls, blue balls, all of that. It's just white balls. It's great balls of fire. It's just all type of balls. It, but it looked like it was more than two balls that he had in his eye socket. It didn't look like two alone. <laughs> it didn't look like two of them. I checked. I checked. That's like this four. This not. That's five. That's five. No, that's six. That's six. It's like a six number. A oh, man, that's six right there. And somebody else was with me and he stopped them. And not only did he stop them, when they showed him the receipt, he proceeded to continue to stop them and stop them and take pictures and all. It, it was getting radical. And saints, I felt strength in my hand. I wanted to slap that man all the way to Samaria. I wanted to slap that man all the way to Chinatown. I wanted to slap that man all the way to Rush Hour 1. Friday, the beginning, when Smokey was in there. I wanted to slap him all the way back when Smokey was taking his, his necklace off because Debo, <laughs> Debo was coming around the corner with that squeaky bicycle. <laughs> I wanted to slap that man. I felt power in my hand to slap him. That's what I felt. I felt power in my hand to slap that man. Dunamis power. I wanted to drag in Ball Z. And, well, what you going yeah. I felt a dragonfly Jones anointed. Before he get out of the way, boy. <laughs> and since I didn't slap the man. You know why? Because. The spirit of my mind. I'm in control of that. So I can decide whether or not I'm going to react to the suggestion. The Bible said that Jesus was in tempted in all points, yet he did not sin, which means that he controlled the spirit of his mind. Why do people feel lonely and then get depressed? 
they never lived in control of the spirit of their mind. So the spirit of their mind take them down a path and then they go into self-pity. And then saints, not only that, there's other phases. People go into condemnation of self, self-condemnation. There's people like that. They go into self-condemnation. And self-condemnation don't make you do right. Self-condemnation makes you go even further in doing worse. Because here's how Satan gets you in self-condemnation. You start beating up yourself that you did something wrong. And you know that it was wrong. And you still did it. That's not building energy to start doing something right. Now, the next phase of that is to create awkwardness between you and the Lord. Now I can't, uh, I'm, I'm in the wrong anyway, so I can't show myself I'm unclean. I can't show myself because I'm, I'm, I'm wicked. I can't show myself because I'm in witchcraft. I can't show myself because I'm in sin. I, I did something wrong. And then watch this here. Instead of you running to the Lord, you run away from the Lord and go do more stuff. Imagine how smart you is. So self-condemnation is a trick. It's like you are taking vengeance on yourself because you know that you went against your wisdom. You know you went against your knowledge. But then you actually do more stuff that goes against the knowledge. How do you know that the, 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 the phrase, the theme of your mind was wrong? Because it produces more sin. It's the same way. There's people that say, well, God telling me to expose this person. Bah, 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 bah. God telling me to expose this person. But then how do you get into more works of the flesh while you're doing that? You start gossiping. You start staying up all night trying to destroy them. You start connecting with people that you know ain't no good just because you try to destroy them. And it doesn't. So how is all that's proceeding out of you worse if this is God having you do this, would it God protect you? Sure. Would it God give you discernment not to share stuff with certain people? Sure. But why is all of that blindfolded from you? Because the thought is from the enemy. And now we're dealing with the spirit of the mind. The spirit of the mind is being ruled by spirits that hate God and hate you because you are who God has selected to make like him. So now you're the target. Now you're the target. So if you take a note, write this down. Deliverance is not abstinence. Deliverance is disinterest. When you get delivered from something, it, don't, it doesn't mean that you no longer attend it. Your attendance might be off, but that don't mean that you, you are delivered. So a lot of times what people do is they look at themselves and say, well, I'm not doing that, so I'm delivered from it. The inactivity of doing something is not proof of deliverance. How many of you all know that if I'm addicted to, um, if I'm addicted to sushi, I can be absent from sushi, but I could be thinking about, I wish I had some sushi, man. If I just had some sushi, I'm not delivered if my brain is thinking about the sushi, even though it's not present. I could be eating spaghetti, but if I'm thinking about the sushi, I'm not delivered from sushi. When I'm delivered from sushi, here's what happens. I am no longer spending my brain time thinking about sushi. I'm enjoying the spaghetti when I got it. I'm enjoying the mac and cheese when I got it. I'm enjoying the cornbread when I got it. I'm enjoying the ribs when I got it. I'm enjoying the rice when I got it. I'm enjoying the, the I'm enjoying other stuff. If I am still thinking on sushi, I'm not delivered. 
Now, what people have done for ages, and this is why Satan has such a foothold on man, is not because Satan is more powerful. Man just are not taking the time to rule the spirit of their mind. What Satan does is have you look at your abstinence. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Not doing it is not proof that you deliver. Judas did not always go talk to people and tell them Jesus' location. But he was still Judas. And he still had a devil. He was absent from the Pharisees' services some of the times, but he was still Judas. So now the time presents itself. He was thinking about it, and now he finally does it. Deliverance doesn't mean I am absent. I'm absent from it. You know, they was drinking, but I'm not there drinking. That don't mean I'm delivered. That means I'm absent. When I'm delivered, I'm disinterested. That means that if somebody say, hey, I'm about to head there and I'll drive you there. You All you got to do is just get in the seat. You ain't got to pay no money. I'm going to buy your drinks. I'm going I'm to take care of y'all night. Just come with me. Just hop in the back seat. You ain't got to pay no gas, nothing. You can leave your purse at home. Just come with me. And that's when you can see, am I delivered? Because you tell them, no, thank you. Um, I, 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 I'm not, I don't want to go, but enjoy yourself. I'm good. I, I don't want to go. That's when you deliver. Because say, you got to understand when you're not delivered, Satan got a million ways to bring you into the activity, even though you've been absent from it for a long period of time. Me, me, listen, you haven't done it for a long period of time. You ain't said it. You ain't associated with it for a long period of time. And then you like, I'm delivered. No, 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 no. If Satan knows that you're not delivered, Satan knows how to pit the pieces to the puzzle together so that you could see that you still would indulge in it if the atmosphere is right. My goodness. My goodness, that's how you know Jesus is the truth. Because he's hungry. 40 days, 40 nights, no food. And his favorite food is bread. His favorite food is fish. He liked eating stuff like that. He done tasted some good fish, some good bread. He know how to cook that bread. He know how to eat the bread good. He even called himself the bread of life. He even said, when you do communion, get some bread, break it, and do this in remembrance of me. He's in love with bread. He loves bread. And here comes Satan said, turn these stones into bread. My goodness. But Jesus show disinterest, my goodness. And that disinterest means that he was delivered. If he said, well, 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 um, uh, uh, how, how much, how much bread am I going to get out of these stones? Uh, well, 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 if I just turn one stone into, uh, uh bread, would that be enough for you? Now you'll know that I'm the son of God. There was no interest. That's what deliverance is. Potiphar's wife told on Joseph, not because Joseph was disrespecting her with his mouth. Potiphar's wife told on Joseph because Joseph showed disinterest. That was the disrespect. When she saw disinterest, wait a minute. Me and my fine self, my body like wine is fine, and he don't want to be mine. And I'm giving him all this time to shine and be thine, but now he don't want to intertwine. And, and, and she couldn't believe that that even though he 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 wasn't Eve, he was Steve, he was a man that he he didn't want, you know. You know, huh? Huh? Uh huh? <laughs> huh? And, and while she looking at him and he looking at her, 
And she's saying in her mind, how is he disinterested in me? And then since it's not only that, then she got to look at the maids because she had already been talking to the maids about him. She had our, they was looking at his butt when he walked Then She was, she was just looking and she was just into him, boy. And she was into him and she had already discussed with them. And you know, uh, uh, when that happened, now it's like a baby D situation. She won't rough him up because it's like, hey, hey, I, I done told them that I was going to get him. And then now he ain't. And saints, let me just tell you this. I want to say this to you as a prophet. There was other men that wanted Potiphar's wife. There was other men that worked in that kingdom that wanted Potiphar's wife. She was a confident woman. And she felt that all the male workers had respected her and wanted her. And she was the top woman and she looked good and she kept herself. This was not no ugly woman. Saints, she ran after him. That means that she was athletic. See, can I talk to you from the prophetic? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know, if you got a water bagel underneath here, you can't run after no, no, no fit man like Joseph. All right. Well, you know, when we fast like that, you can't run after us and, and still hang with us for a minute. She was holding on strong. He had to juke a couple of times. He had to juke a couple of times, you know. He, he had to juke her. That bangalow was flipping and slipping. And he had to juke a couple of times. And that, that was the embarrassing thing because he juked a couple of times. That's why she had to grab the garment because he was so quick. But she, how did she grab the garment? Despite him eluding her, she still had some speed because she's an athletic woman. She's in shape. She ain't had no water bagel or just shake it like that, did She ain't had no water bagel or just shake it like that. She had a water bagel or just shake it like that. She wouldn't be able to get her. She would have had a cramp when she stretched out her hands. As soon as she went, ah! She would have had a cramp as soon as she went, go straight out her hands. You see what I'm saying? So th this woman was a fit woman. She was in shape. She was doing them leg lifters. Huh, 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 three. Huh, 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 three. Huh, 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 three. She was doing them leg liftings and them them shiftings. She was she was <laughs> she was pumping and pumping. You know she had energy. You know that she had energy because 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 Potiphar had already uh, 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 fixed a full course meal. They had already uh, Potiphar had already took her to the stadium, the baseball game for hot dogs and stuff. And she still was, she was full and then she came back and she, she still wanted to go to the barbecue. That's what I'm saying. So why was there not barbecue after that? Why is it, why after the baseball game, the, the Astros won, the Astros won. And why, why are we going to a second baseball game? Why, 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 why are people, why is looking at the bats? Bats and, 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 and. And think about this. Joseph did not show abstinence alone because he was absent, but he showed disinterest. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. I hope you're catching this. 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 He not only was absent, my goodness, my goodness. He not only was absent, but look, he's in a place where not only is he absent. <laughs> why, why, he, <laughs> why he absent? He's still disinterested. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? Huh? Saints, the powerful thing about this is this. Look what the word of God said. Let's go here uh, to Genesis chapter 39. By the way, I want I want to also say that favor makes people look desirable. Favor is sexy. 
That's why the more favor that you have on your life, the more uh, uh, people show interest in you. Just remember that. But when you have favor, it's a judgment on your life because you are the only one that could filter that favor and decide to steward that favor correctly. When, you're fa when you have favor on you, more people will want you. Some of you are, I want to tell you prophetically as a seer, you have not been, um, you have not been blameless with the favor that God has given to you because you haven't controlled the spirit of your mind. So you, you think because Willie Earl keep calling you beautiful every morning because Willie Earl keep telling you, you know, if, 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 um, um, you know, he'll massage your feet, even if it's a hundred degrees of heat outside, he still will massage your feet. You, 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 you get amused by that. Since you ever seen them people that be marrying overseas, huh? To Matumbo or or not just Matumbo, Muhammad. Muhammad. And when I say Matumbo, I'm talking about on the African side. When I say Muhammad, I'm talking about the Indian side. I'm talking about over there by India way. I'm talking about over there. And it's because that that man is vigilant. Hello, my beautiful queen. My beautiful queen, how are you today, my queen? I just was thinking about you today. I was drinking my martini, man. And as soon as I opened up the martini, I smelt the whiff of your fragrance. The fragrance. And this. And I, I went to go get two pineapples. I saw two melons. <laughs> And it reminded me, I saw melons, <laughs> and I just imagined you with the two melons. <laughs> These two, I saw two cantaloupes. And when I looked at the cantaloupes, I saw, I saw, it's, it's just you, baby, it's just you on my mind. And then you go to the other area, you go to the Mohammed. Do you know that I love you so much? I love you so much. I could not just, I had to say something today. I just want to be with you somehow. Do I got to cross the rivers? Do I got to cross the skies? I'll do anything just to be with your apple pies. Apple pies. You're just beautiful. You're just a queen. Somebody needs to do you right, and it is me. That's Mohammed. And when you have favor, people like you, and you got to know how to filter what you receive from the liking. Now, watch this here. Watch this here. So, so Joseph has favor on him, which means that he is sexy. Favor is sexy. And I, I want to be honest, because saints, a lot of times, um, you ever seen somebody that has a lot of people that like them, and then you look at them like from just a, a neutral place, and you're like, this person, why do people like them? Like, what, what's special about them? Like, they ain't got nothing, they don't look nice. They don't look. Because people are, are, are looking at all of the favor that's on the person. The person is making moves. They could be winning games. They could be making money. There's favor. They could have endorsements. They could have people uh, speaking good about them, sponsoring them. So people are liking them off of favor. Favor make people like you. Favor is sexy. Favor is sexy. Many people won't be able to articulate that, but me and the wisdom anointed, I'm telling you that because I, I know, you know, I, 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 can, I can articulate it correctly. I can articulate it instead of beating around the bush. Favor is sexy. All right. There, there was not just, um, let, let me say this to you, and this is a shocker. God told David, I will give you even your neighbor's wife. I'll give you Saul. I, I'll give you anybody's wife if you want it. You know, I'll, I'll bless you with any woman and what you want. But, it's not that David even had to rape these women. 
these women will want to be with David. David was sexy to them anyway. So when David called them, <laughs> it was like, And Bathsheba, she was taken aback, but she was flattered <laughs> that she wasn't flat, but she was flattered that David saw interest in her. All right, she knew who David was. Remember, uh, David has power. <laughs> David has power over... <laughs> I just want, I want to bring this point home. That's why I'm giving you examples. I don't, I don't mean no harm. I'm just giving you examples. By the way, I just want to say this too. Never mind. I'm not going to say that either. Um, but uh, David, when he called her, Bathsheba actually enjoyed the thought because David was considered a sexy man. He was considered a beautiful man. Even David right now, David here is um, now let me um let, let me let me talk about this rather. Let me deal with this. So the 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 woman that God is saying I would give them to you if you would ask, those women wasn't in opposition to that they would have wanted him to do that. They would want David to request. Saints, did you ever notice that Abigail didn't put up a fight? She went like, I need to grieve. My husband just died. Just give me a second. David said, come on, baby. Come on with me. Abigail got up. She left She left the house and went with David. <laughs> Saints, her husband just died, man. She ain't planned the funeral. She didn't make sure he had a burial. She, man, listen, she didn't make sure that he, that man wasn't dead for a month. David said, come on with me, baby. Come on. We got some things. I want to see you. I want to see you tonight. I want, I want, I want to see you tonight. As so, she didn't say, Lord willing, if this is God's will, just wait, David. He'll make it possible if this God's will. No, she was already ready. She had already pampered herself. She had already did her hair. She was already waiting for David. <laughs> I'm, I, I want to bring this home, how favor is sexy. I want you to recognize this. This, this because, because many, many people can't articulate this. I'm telling you that favor is sexy. Saints, you think that sometimes basketball players be with these, these women that look fake? Their back be hurting. These women back be hurting. And the reason why they back hurting is because the watermelons is too big. All right? They got, they got fake watermelons. The watermelons is too big. All right? <laughs> but, but you'll see them. You'll see them with somebody. And you're like... How did this person with the wa with these oversized watermelons, these watermelons tearing them down, tearing down their back structure? Why is they over there? And 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 you look at the person, you're like, there's nothing to the person. The, the what's to the person is that they have favor. They have favor with the NBA. They have favor with the NFL. They have favor with the NHL. They have favor with the music industry. That's the secret. Man, uh, favor is sexy. So you, you understand this. And this is why when you have favor, that's why people pop up. People don't even be talking to you when you in sin, when you just doing your thing. You be ugly as day. They don't be talking to you. As soon as you get favor, now they won't pop up. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. They want to pop up as soon as you got favor. Why when you was cross-eyed, cock-eyed, and, and, and you had a gap all over your back, your, your, all of that. Why Why they weren't saying nothing to you? It's not until you get favor. When the favor come, now you become sexy to them. Now you become appeasable. Now you look nice. Now, now you talk. That's what I'm saying. All right, look at this here. <laughs> look at this here. Look at this here. 
I, I just want to bring the point home. I just want to bring the point home. That's all I want to bring the point home. That's what I'm saying. Now look at this here. Look at that. Look at this here. Now, look what the Bible said in verse 6. It says, now, now Joseph, um, now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Now look at this here. I want you to catch it. It didn't say that he was handsome in appearance. Form and appearance are two different things. Appearance is this. Form. I, I ain't got no I ain't got no example for form. I ain't got no example for form either. But form is something I wanted to use. But I'm not going to use it. Appearance is face. Form is waist. See, 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 see. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, Joseph looks good to her facially when she looks at his face, how he does his hair. Oh, he look good. He look, he look good. But not only is she looking at that, she looking at the Banana Republican. This is Banana Republican. The Banana Republic. I, you know, Republicans, because we're going through a tough time with the, you know, gas all high and stuff like that. The oil, fuel, the fuel pipes all over America. We borrowing. We borrowing from. Who we borrowing from? All over, you know. But I want you to look at this here. Look look at this here. So, what, what, what is, what's, what's happening here is that he's handsome in form and appearance. Appearance and form. Now look at what the word says right here. He was handsome in appearance, in form and appearance. So when he appeared to her, he looked nice. But when she looked at his form, that means his arms, his legs, his, every, you know, that's what she was studying. Now look at this here. Look at verse seven. And after a time, that's, that's why I keep telling you all, you're not always in the time where your biggest temptations, you're not always in the time where you are seeing whether or not you deliver. Sometimes the attacks against you so small, you won't even recognize that you're not really delivered. Look, after a time, so time goes past. So she was already looking at his form. She was already looking at his arm. <laughs> Wait, it said form. Let me let me take that one off. She was already looking at his form. She was already looking at his appearance. Those of you all that have children, turn me off, okay? I want, I want you to turn me off. Turn me off. Don't let them listen to this one. Just tell them. This is this one is not for you. This is for um, this is for um, this is for uh, a secret, a secret impartation for where I'm at. I needed this, but this is not for you. Just tell them that. Don't have them watch this one. This broadcast is rated R. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Cause some of y'all forget. I'm just I'm just telling you this. It's rated R, so just all right. So all right. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off now. Turn it off now. Cause I'm going further. I'm going further. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you later too. Bye. Now look at what <laughs> look at what happened in verse seven. Look at what happened in verse seven. And after a time, 
his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. Look, look, lie, lie. Look at what she said, lie with me. I want you to catch it. Lie, lie with me. You, you know, yeah. lie with me. Look at, she used the word lie. Lie with me, lie with me, lie with me. So think about this. If we look at the word lie, this is what Satan does. So what, what, what she's saying, come into the satanic realm with me. Sha -ta 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 -ta. Come into the satanic dimension with me. Lie with me. Take on this realm of the gates of hell with me. Look, lie with me. But look what the Bible says, verse 8. But he refused. You, you know what refuse means? Delivered. That's what refuse means. Refuse means delivered. So I'm telling you that deliverance is not abstinence. Deliverance is refusal. Deliverance is disinterest. The, the wisdom does this. Deliverance is not abstinence. Deliverance is disinterest. When you become disinterested, because some of you are, you're still not delivered from religion. God will tell you to sit your behind down, don't go to no church. You wasn't doing nothing in church. Ain't nothing was moving for you mentally. Ain't nothing was happening. You just wanted to be there because you want the club feeling. You like, you, like the, you like the dance. You like the shout. You like the movement. You like the music. You like the choir. You like it. You like to feel the emotionalism. That's all you like. That's what you like. You like to say, you like people coming up to you. Hey, sister. Hey, elder. Hey, I, hey. You like that. That's what you like. That's what people like. That's what they like. They like that. They like being noticed. They like being recognized. You know, if we saw you do this and we proud. They like being called to teach. They like the possibility that it might be called to teach. And it's just a whole bunch of stuff with it. But God tell you, sit down. Now, your absence from doing that, that form of godliness, doesn't mean that you delivered. Because if you find if you find your, your thought life, you, you start drinking. There comes a time you start dreaming again. I need to get connected to the I need to get back at you. I need to get back in with the fellowship of the saints. I need to get back with the fellowship of the saints. The fellowship of the saints. The fellowship, the fellas, the fellas, the fellas, the fellas, the fellas, the fellas, the fellas of the saints. I need to get back to get after some time. You recognize that you're still interested in what God said, don't do. And after time, now you out there pursuing it again. That's why I'm telling you. That I was telling you in the Woman of God broadcast, if you look at your life, your life is full of cycles. You get tired of doing something because God put the tiresomeness inside of you. He letting you know, listen, girl, I ain't got that for you. This not for you. This not what I have for you. And then you, you, you wander, you wander. And Satan know what to make you hear. Then you say, okay, let me unravel everything that God told me. Let me go back to this. Let me do this. And now you back doing the very thing. And then you get tired after some time. Something bad happened. And somebody got disrespected. Somebody got hurt you. Something got to go wrong. Something got to go left. You got to have a bad service. You got to have a bad experience. And then all of a sudden, you stop again. You stop again. Then, then, then something happened, then talk about you, about my body, you start feeling bad, car break down, stuff start happening. Then you stop again. And then you stop, after time, then you come back again. You go right back, and then you stop again. And then, then you you good, then something go wrong, you get bored, you can start right. And the life is just full of cycles. Because you're not delivered. Deliverance is not abstinence. Deliverance is disinterest. And until you disinterested, and look, look what the Bible says. She said, lie with me. And what did David say? But he refused. My gosh. <sighs> until you start refusing. So what, what? what's the mystery about refusing? The things that you believe that you delivered from will keep on popping back seasonally. Ah, uh, ah, uh, 
I said the things that you think that you're delivered from, you going to have a season where it looked like you ain't even think about, I'm good, I'm good. And then it pops back again up in another season. And then you think you're good, you're good. Then it pops back up in another season. Until you subdue the devil underneath you. Until you pitch your foot on the devil's neck. Until you're seated on the throne with Jesus. And you holding your own, my God, until you seated on the throne and holding your own, until the power of God has established itself in you, on you, with you, until you got power over your thoughts and power over your addictions and habits and schedule, until you walking and not looking to the left or to the right, until your eyes not looking out the window and saying, what if? Until you stop looking back at Sodom and Gomorrah, you don't know that you delivered until you could refuse. God going to give you power in the month of August, in the month of September, in the month of October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, all around. He going to give you power to walk in true deliverance. You can't walk in deliverance unless you receive the gospel for your life. Everybody got a gospel for their life. For the life of Apostle Paul, it's 15 years being in the backside of the desert, not preaching to nobody, just learning the revelation of Jesus. That's Apostle Paul's gospel. For Peter, it's to walk on the water. It's to be at the Mount of Transfiguration. That wasn't the same gospel for Bartholomew. You don't see Bartholomew seeing Elijah. You don't see Bartholomew seeing Moses. But for Peter, his gospel is to see, to see Elijah, to see Moses. His gospel is to walk on the water. His gospel is to say that these men are not drunk as you suppose. They filled with the Holy Ghost. That's his gospel. Everybody's gospel is different. For James' gospel, his gospel is talking about patience. His gospel is talking about no partiality. His gospel is talking about sowing and reaping. His gospel is talking about the return of the Lord. His gospel is talking about the lust that you must overcome. Because that's a different gospel. For John, his gospel is dealing with perfect love. He telling you to walk in love towards your brethren. How to discern how the enemy comes in as the spirit of Antichrist. To get you against the will of Christ for you. To make you hate his will. To get you deceived with a false prophetic anointing. Everybody got a different gospel. If you stick to the gospel on your life, you will never be in chains again. You are the only one that can say yes to your gospel. Everybody got a different gospel. Some people try to push their gospel down in your throat and you don't understand I'm a different soul than you. Your gospel is for the type of soul that you got. Yet God probably told you to build a church. God probably told you to attend the church. But for my gospel, my my karata, my soul not supposed to go to church. My soul is walking in Holy Ghost wisdom and understanding about my.